Hey, it's Ellie, and welcome back to my channel. So, as you can see, I just took a shower. You're looking at a bare-faced Ellie. But, I know you guys clicked on this video because you wanted to see my study wall. And I will be showing you guys that today. But first, of course, I wanted to do a little bit of a makeup moment. And sit down and just talk to you guys. So... Your girl is officially an RN. Guys, stop. <laughs> Don't forget to wear your sunscreen, kids. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who left such beautiful and encouraging comments in my last video. If you guys haven't watched the last video, it is me reacting to my board exam results, showing you guys the whole journey behind the scenes. You guys saw me crying. You guys, I even gave a couple of tips i think did i i don't remember you're gonna have to click the link down below to find out i am feeling so refreshed i'm feeling free i'm feeling excited and i have a lot of content in store for you guys i hope you guys don't think that just because i've passed the board exam i'm just gonna stop vlogging about nursing no way there's just there's so much i want to tell you guys and i know you guys also have a couple of questions like what now ellie like are you going to take the nmat are you going to go into med school and if you were an early subscriber you would know that my dream was to become a doctor i wanted to be a doctor so much after all of that four years of nursing studying taking the boards i just it's not on my priority list right now Hold on, I gotta, I gotta blend this out because I look funny. So yeah, that's just one question that I wanted to tackle because I know, even myself, I was trying to figure that out. So now, you guys know my answer. Um, med school is not one of my priorities right now. Um, I just finished nursing you guys and I think I want to stick to that. For now, I want you guys to know that one, this is a really pretty color. <laughs> and two, what I want to focus on right now is making a ton of content for you guys regarding nursing school, graduating, the board exams. I want to focus on giving you guys all the tips, essentials, and knowledge that you need because I kind of figured out along the way that you guys are my advocacy. I realized, yes, there are a lot of people who are applying and working hard to take care of patients in the hospital, healthcare centers, and just taking care of people overall. But what I realized is not a lot of people were aiming to really take care of the nursing students. And that's what I really want to do. So in terms of what's next and what am I going to do now, I am going to focus all of my work towards you guys. As firsthand experiencing how challenging nursing school can be up until the board exam i gotta say it's pretty challenging and i wish i wish there was someone who could really guide me who could really take my hand and say here this is what you have to do and now going through all those trials through nursing school studying for the boards taking the boards and passing, I want to be that hand to you guys. I wish someone was there to tell me that it's okay, that it's a part of the process, that there are ways to make it easier. And I want to be that person for you guys. So I hope that answers all of your questions regarding my future and the next steps that I will be taking. I went on about that longer than I was supposed to. So let's go ahead and finish my makeup. Now before we begin with the tour, let me just say a few things. One, this is not complete at all. I'm talking not complete. These are just a bunch of random different notes that I felt like I had to memorize for the exam. There is no med search on here. I know a lot of you guys on my TikTok were asking for med search notes, OB, Pedia. All of my notes are on my iPad and the only things that I put up here were things that I felt like I didn't memorize that much and I needed to memorize for the exam so uh, do not expect that this is a complete set of my notes it's not it's not even half but you guys will definitely get a lot out of these notes on my wall 
And lastly, all of these notes are gathered from all different types of resources. We're talking YouTube videos, different kinds of websites, textbooks, etc. So without further ado, let me show you my nursing study wall. Okay, so my wall starts here. I started doing it and building it from here and then I went to this side. I took down all of my pictures and then this side. So it's really this whole side of my room right here. And that's not even half of what I had to study for the boards. Now we're going to start here. As you can see, we have a lab value cheat sheet and also the cranial nerves. And I got these off of Pinterest, but I believe this is from the nursing bundle review book. I'm, I'm really not sure. I'll link it down below. I think that's only available in the States. So I'm going to link her website down below if you guys want to order that. I just got these off of Pinterest, so uh, there's that. This was really helpful for when I was trying to memorize all of these values because she also has a YouTube channel where she explains all of that with like different kinds of memorization tricks and I absolutely love that. Then we had the cranial nerves and for some reason I just couldn't memorize all of these right away, but this printout is everything to me. They have the cranial nerve right here, the function, the kind of test, and also there's like a little visual of what it's for, which is super helpful. This is exactly what helped me on the board exam. I just remembered the little symbols for like eyes and the mouth and the ears and the tongue and all of that. So that was a super helpful one. But then I also had my own version of notes for the cranial nerves. As you can see, I actually posted this on my Instagram story and my TikTok. Then down here, we just have a couple of equations and also some conversion units. Actually, there was only one math problem in the whole five exams of the board exam. So that was nice. And then we have blood matching here. We have the universal donor, which is O, universal recipient, which is AB. And I actually wrote this on the back of my exam paper so I could remember because for some reason I was also getting that confused a lot of times. And then down here we have the Parkland formula. This is for burns and I don't know what happened here. I think I was spraying like room scent spray and then it kind of did that. But anyways, that's the Parkland formula. This is the rule of nines. This is super helpful. As you can see, I have my little stickman figure right here. It gives you the percentage, the body area percentage for each. This posterior and anterior. And then I have like the body surface area percentage for like the whole head, the whole arm, the chest and abdomen area, and the whole leg. So that was also helpful for me as well. Okay, so moving on, we have the whole nursing process right here. I'm talking the whole ad pie. So I have assessment here, and then right next to it is everything about the nursing health history. We also have Gordon's functional health patterns, and then we have diagnosis. So that's the second one, and that's all the parts of the diagnosis, and also the different types of diagnoses. We have the PES format for a nursing diagnosis, and we even refer to NANDA, which is the book that we use for nursing diagnosis. And then we have our planning, different kinds of planning, short-term goal, long-term goal, that's pretty short and self-explanatory. Then we have implementation, right? We have our independent, dependent, and interdependent or collaborative um, actions when it comes to our nursing care. And lastly, we have evaluation. So these are the three statements that we need to put when we are evaluating our patient after doing all of the interventions. So either goals are met, partially met, or not met. So that is all of my notes for the nursing process, or ADPI. Now down here, this was a whole, I don't know, hour 
of a lesson during the lecture that I was listening to and it was kind of a doozy but when you look at it individually it makes so much sense so we have crutches we have the four point three point two point swing two and swing through so I'm not gonna explain all of that I'm just giving you guys a tour here but feel free to take screenshots and you know take these notes down yourselves and then we have cane and the important thing that you guys need to remember when it comes to a patient with a cane is that the cane needs to go on the opposite side of the affected leg or cold and lastly we have the walker and this just works the same way as a cane oh wait we have one more little sticky note here which is for wheelchair stretcher and transfer transferring patients is another very significant um, topic when it comes to fundamentals of nursing you also have a little note here that says nurses should not lift more than 30 pounds of his or her own weight moving on we have the levels of prevention so as you can see this is kind of my fundamentals of nursing side and now we're moving on to kind of the CHN community health nursing side so we have the levels of prevention and everything that falls under it because this is very important for NP1 primary secondary and tertiary and then here you can see the little pyramid showing you guys kind of a simple explanation of what you're looking for when you're asked about types of prevention moving on we have the immunization schedule this is very 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 important when it comes to CHN there's always a lot of questions about immunization, so be sure to study this. We have BCG, HEPA B, and so on. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm going to lose my voice if I read all of this. So here, going down, I think this is actually still fundamentals. I just couldn't fit it on the other side. But we have the different kinds of color coding, and I believe I showed this to you guys in my last video. So we have the triage colors right here. We have the waste bin colors. We have the green, the green. <laughs> we have the gas tank colors. And then we have the colors for the oxygen devices, specifically the Venturi mask. So moving on, we have nurse patient relationship. This is another significant topic. So we have pre orientation phase, orientation phase, and working phase. So you guys might be learning about this. You'll also be asked questions like, for example, um, what stage in the nurse-patient relationship is the stage where you try to establish trust? And so the answer would be orientation phase. Questions like that. You have another sticky note here um, about establishing trust. Trust is everything, you guys. Trust with your patient is everything, initiating rapport, this will set the mood, the tone for your relationship with this patient and how well they're going to cooperate with the care plan that you're going to give them. So make sure that you guys take that to heart. Oh, we also have the termination phase. So that's four phases of the nurse-patient relationship. Pre-orientation, orientation, working, and termination. Moving on, we have the nursing modalities, and this is another topic that you will get a lot of questions on. So we have functional, total care, team, primary, case method, and modular method. I'm not sure if there's more, but these are what I saw in one of the websites that I looked up. Now a sample question for this would be like, what kind of nursing strategy or nursing technique is task oriented? The answer would be functional. Or it'd be like, what is the nursing modality wherein one nurse leads a group of nursing personnel? That would be team, and so on. So this is another important topic to know. And lastly, this is more on for Philippine nursing. So this is the 17 SDGs, or the Sustainable Development Goals. So, yeah. Okay, so moving on, what you are looking at from here to here is my psychiatric nursing wall. It's a lot. First, we start off strong with the ego defense mechanisms. I love psychiatric nursing. It's actually very interesting, a little mix of psychology, 
the reasoning behind people's actions and thoughts. It's so interesting. So then here we also have Freud's structural theory of personality. It's ego, super ego, things like that. You guys will learn that and this whole thing in the beginning of your psychiatric nursing, I believe. So then I actually went from there to here. So we have some important psych concepts, you guys. This is so important because most of the psych exam questions besides medication is going to be about therapeutic communication, how to deal with different kinds of psych patients. It's so interesting because all of the answers seem correct, but there's only one correct, correct answer. So these are just a couple of concepts that I wanted to remember as I took NP5 or the psych part of the board exam. So we have self-awareness, super important trust and rapport, like I said earlier, therapeutic communication, and setting limits. Next, we have you cannot totally remove anxiety, you can only tolerate it. Anxiety cannot fully 100% be eliminated from someone. Even someone who isn't a patient has anxiety, any kind of form of anxiety. So you can only tolerate it and not completely get rid of it. Um, give what the monkey wants. Um, that is just um, don't overthink the question. Just answer what is being asked because there are a lot of times where you are going to overthink a question and it's going to get you lost when you're trying to answer. So just really ask yourself what is the main question here? Are we asking about a medication? Are we asking what is the priority action for the nurse to implement? And just answer that solely. Safety is number one, and restraints are a last resort. Also, did I include what, um, did I put consent? Oh, oh, here it is. Informed consent required. Consent is also very important, not only in psych nursing, but nursing all around. So these are just a couple of other um, concepts in psych nursing that I wanted to remember. Seclusion and restraints. Moving on, we have delusions and hallucinations, and these are just what to do when you're dealing with these kinds of patients. So for delusions, you have cave. For hallucinations, you have harder. So these are the different kinds of disturbances that a patient may have. Um, one very common one is this one. When a patient is feeling superior and vulnerable to others, yes, this is a delusion. And then we have also Disturbances in perception, so this is under hallucinations. The different kinds, visual, tactile, olfactory, um, what is this, gustatory, and auditory. Auditory is the most dangerous hallucination. Why? It's because um, there may be a patient that has voices in their head telling them to do something, and, you know, nurses will never know unless this patient tells them. So, this is very dangerous. Okay, next we get into assault cycle, aggressive patients, manic patients. You guys, I don't want to go too deep into this because psychiatric nursing is a very deep, complicated topic. And again, that's why the number one concept is self-awareness. You need to have a lot of self-awareness to understand all of these, especially if you're an emotional person like me. So this is a very, very heavy subject. So I don't want to get too deep into it. So I'm just going to kind of browse through it a little bit, show you guys. You guys might understand why. I just want to browse through it. Crisis interventions, stages of grief, depressed patients, suicidal, direct confrontation with suicidal patients, and a withdrawn patient. So again, I'm sorry if I don't get too deep into this. I don't know if it's only nursing students watching this or maybe it's other people who aren't even in nursing who are interested, but that is it for my psychiatric nursing wall. And lastly, we have this side. So this is my OB wall. There is nothing about pediatrics on here. I do not know why, but I do have a whole paper of notes, a whole paper of notes, and I will be sure to post that on my Instagram story next time, so watch out for that. So first we have the three different kinds of pregnancy signs. We have presumptive, probable, and positive. I actually posted a whole TikTok explaining each and every one of these things, so go ahead and check that out on my TikTok at Hey It's Ellie. 
Then we have Abruptio Placenta and Placenta Privia. And I believe, I believe that, I don't, I forgot who said it, but these are two very, very relevant topics in NP2 where we talk about um, maternal nursing. So this will almost always, I think, will show up in the board exam, Abruptio Placenta and Placenta Previa. I have another little note on here for Abruptio Placenta. These are just the different kinds of signs and symptoms. So lastly on this side, we have the Leopold's Maneuver, Bundle, Umbilical, Pollux, Pelvic Grip, Non-Stress Test, Stress Test. Um, we have the kinds of, uh, where is this? The kinds of decelerations, early, late, and variable. So that's for contractions. And then we have the stages of labor. One, two, three, four stages of labor. This is the one that you guys need to know the most. This is the latent active transition phase. So you guys have to know the dilation, the duration, the interval, and these are kind of like the emotional effects on the mother as she's going through these stages of labor. So we have excitement at first, then she gets a little anxious, and then she gets argumentative. And lastly, we have APGAR scoring. So this is for newborns to see if they're normal, moderately depressed, or needs immediate resuscitation. I'm sorry, guys. I'm losing my voice here. And the very last thing you'll see on my wall is this huge kind of clump of a white paper. And this is not mine. I typed this up from Ustig Nurse's YouTube video. I will link this down below. Guys, nurses, if you are not following Astig Nursing, please, or Astig Nurse, please follow his channel. His channel is one of my number one resources, okay? So he actually made this video about an NLE cram sheet, and it was like kind of a compiled PowerPoint, and I just took the time and typed all of it out. So let me give you guys a little bit of an overview for this. We have a little bit of communicable diseases here. And then we go into health teaching and education. Now we go up to, guys, Palmer. You guys, I have not released the video regarding subjects I wish I took more seriously, but Palmer is definitely one of them. And you guys will touch up on ethical responsibilities, nursing research, nursing liabilities and doctrines of negligence and so much more. We have a little bit of osteoporosis. Then we go into some Philippine laws that you guys need to know. I don't remember if some of these turned up or not. Going down again, we have some code of ethics. Then some rheumatoid arthritis. Going up here, we have record management acid base imbalances, and cardiogenic shock. Moving on here, we have some musculoskeletal conditions, tracheostomy care, a little bit of psych nursing, borderline personality disorder, some types of leadership, HIV, and then we have some obstetrics, epidemiology, and ringworms. So um, these post-its were actually on their corresponding topic on the other pages, but I just put them all here because it was just so blank. So just some more um, notes about ethical responsibilities, beneficence, non-maleficence, um, types of leprosy, and what is this? Shoulder impingement syndrome. And also, patterns of epidemiology. Sporadic, endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. Which, we've had enough of you. So you guys, that's it. That is my whole nursing wall. Don't mind that, that's like some self-help, self-improvement quotes. But that is the rest of my nursing wall. Anyways. Again, this is not complete. This is not the complete notes 
of what I studied. This isn't even half but I hope that it helped you guys. I know a lot of you guys are gonna comment asking if do I have a website where I post this? Do I have a PDF file? Do I have copies that I can give to you guys? And as of now, I do not, but please make sure to stay tuned for my future projects. There are a lot of things that I want to do for you guys, starting with secret <laughs> but I know you guys want my notes you guys want a lot of the things that I use for studying so I will make sure to get all of that out to you guys as soon as possible please just subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram TikTok, Facebook and I will update you guys on there so if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell don't forget to follow me on all of my social media right here my name is Ellie registered nurse RN and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!